D&D, a classic tabletop game that made every millennial and their doggo want to start a podcast in the last five years in hopes that one day that they too can live out an erotic fanfiction with the fantasy character of their dreams. Trust me. Oh my god! All jokes aside, I really love playing tabletop games. Video games are fun, but nothing beats the creativity and laughs you get while doing improv with a group of friends. Fuck those players who just want to min-max. I'm here to play as a liberal arts professor goblin with a PhD in arcane environmentalism and otherworldly bestial sexuality. So today I decided to hop on the trend train and do a design based off a creature from the monster manual. So let's see what we get from the old capsule machine. Ah, the bullet. Also known as a land shark, was fearsome magical beast feared and hated by most living creatures. I don't want to make a copy of the design that we see in the D&D official books. So the first thing we should do is figure out how we can get to a unique design. It's a step a lot of beginner artists miss out on because they want to rush into the final painting and render out their little turds. Look, I know, I do this too. Sometimes you think you hot shit, but you ain't. We're all just little monkeys trying to finger paint after all. But you gotta start out with thumbnails, so we can actually explore ideas. Nothing truly creative is just pulled out of your two tiny butt cheeks. And trust me, my butt cheeks are tiny. You can even see with my first thumbnail that I'm just retreading one. I haven't gotten inspired yet, and things aren't looking too different from the original book design. One great technique I learned while studying design was building out a word association list before starting my thumbnail drawings. This helps me organize my thoughts and find visual hooks that I feel are interesting but are easily understandable for the viewer. Even right now, I'm finding little hints of what are to come, like the claws being big, the star nose mole, and a lot of these things will influence my design going forward. I actually thought this third thumbnail was a really cool idea. Having the land shark theming come out with a much more obvious shark anatomy felt really original for this creature design, and I almost picked this one to take to finish. But I still wanted to keep intact the original spirit of the creature's description, and generally in D&D campaigns, they describe the boulette as a hulking, earth-shaking creature as it tears its way through the ground. The longer, sleeker design just didn't cut it for me. I think it's dope, so maybe I'll use this for a creature for another day. Concept art is about selling ideas, and it's important to find these larger archetypes of design that people will find relatable. It's not like we're trying to create art for aliens that taste with their eyeballs and see with their feet. We create art because we want to connect with humans who have a shared experience, whether it be through emotional or visual hooks. And of course, every culture and social group has their own preconceived notions of archetypes. I'm not going to tell you that designing a bulky creature is 100% going to be a conveyance of strength, but you have to understand the social and psychological filters that we use to experience the world. For me, really good art is finding the balance between where the culture stands and pushing ideas enough outside of the box to be interesting without alienating people. Oh, who's a good boy? You wanna help me make art? You wanna help me do a little creature design? So after doing up nine thumbnails, I thought I'd go with this dude up in the top right. I thought it still embodied the hulking energy of the original, but adding the layered shark teeth and the star-nosed mole-influenced face gave me something that felt fun and unique. I don't know how many people watching this play D&D, I assume because you clicked a video about a D&D monster, you have, or at very least, have seen people play on YouTube. But honestly, one of my favorite things about being an artist is being able to use my skills to create fun experiences for others. I think it's hard for some people to get into tabletop games, especially if they're not used to allowing themselves to open up and be a little silly, a little cringe, and for some people, they might just not use their creative brain often, so they might have issues visualizing the world and scenes in their heads. I had a group of friends I'd never played before, and I wouldn't say they weren't creative people. Generally, I keep friends that are either artists, writers, musicians, but it's always nice to have something for players to see when you're playing a game. So I acted as DM for them with the starter set campaign Minds of Fen Delver, and I spent literally an entire weekend drawing on cardstock all the creatures that they would encounter in the first dungeon. I designed them player characters and built little stands for them so that we could actually use them in game. And like shit, I don't have a bank account big enough to be buying enough miniatures to make an entire game playable, so it was a really awesome way to bring them into the experience. And honestly, they had a fucking blast, man. Notably, one of our players was one of those bird people, and as a musician in real life, he played as a bard. Seriously though, shout out to Knife Throat. If you like indie emo folk punk, do not sleep on this. This human is a goddamn treasure. It was great because he brought his guitar along to the game sesh, and he'd improv a song every time he wanted to cast a spell, like, a goblin is he with a wish for some hair, so set it ablaze, he has locks made of flare, or I don't know, some bullshit like that. I don't know, I'm <laughs> just making this up. 
he'd do some like rhyming poetry that related to the spell he was casting. So I'm really happy with the direction this design is going. I think the visual hook with the star-nosed mole is really coming through, but with that the fleshiness it stays away from feeling like a horror creature, which I definitely don't want, but it still feels super aggressive and dangerous. Like if I saw this thing speeding towards me, popping in and out of the ground, I'd be fucking terrified. And we'll add some highlights to make this bad boy pop, give it a little bit of texture, zippity B. The last thing that I'm going to do is throw in some background elements to ground him in some space, just to sell the vibe that I'm going for. I think leaving the character or creature floating in white space can be kind of boring. Adding some sand, pebbles, and a rock formation in the back adds a fun graphic design to the overall illustration and adds an element of storytelling, which is, you know, it's fun. So, yeah, here's my final design. What do y'all think? I'd love to hear any fun D&D stories, what you think I could change. And hell, if you want to hit me up on Instagram at ramen doodles art, I'd love to see your interpretations of this creature or any of the other creatures from the monster manual. Thanks for checking out my art. Hope y'all are doing good in this crazy, crazy world. And keep having fun with whatever creative endeavors you have. All right, Reese's Pieces, y'all. See you next time. Mm -hmm.